Let's talk about thread. Thread is extremely important on a project like this. You do not want to use your regular old Coates and Clark thread. I mean, Coates and Clark thread is great for regular sewing projects, but these are fine sewing projects, so you need a fine thread. This is an 80 weight thread. I recommend this on fine lace uh, work because it absolutely disappears when you sew. I mean, you can't see the zigzag line once you've sewn with this thread. There's also, it comes in ecru and white and different colors and there's also the 60 weight thread it's a little heavier but it also serves the same purpose but you really must use very fine small threads an 80 weight 60 weight thread and that's the problem I see sometimes on people that are new to heirloom sewing is they use the wrong thread weight and you see a thick a zigzag line and, and you really don't want to see that especially when you're rolling and whipping seams alright glass head pins are a must and the reason is we are constantly ironing with our pins still in the fabric. That's important especially when you're lace shaping. And glass head pins do not melt. If you have plastic head pins, you're going to, I don't even need to tell you the mess you're going to have um, when that melts onto your beautiful Batiste. Um, my favorite product in the world is glue based it. I particularly like this one for heirloom sewing because it has this precise little tip. It allows you to put tiny drops at precise points where you need it. Um, you can glue based lace right on top of fabric. If you, it, a lot of times I just don't like having a lot of pins in the way. Um, it also, when you're working with bias edging, it keeps things from shifting and Lord knows when you're sewing bias, if you shift it even a little, you get those little ripples and this really helps keep things secure and it washes right out. It doesn't stay, it washes out, dries clear. It's great. It's great for applying ribbon too. It keeps your ribbon from shifting, especially when you're working with slick, satiny, silky ribbons. This is a great product to have. Okay, next are wonderful scissors. Get yourself a good pair of, 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 of fabric cutting scissors. You don't want to have uh, dull scissors when you're cutting out beautiful fabrics and lace, but these particular funny looking scissors are duckbill scissors. They're the Martha Pullen series. It's got her name on it. And you need this in heirloom sewing, especially when you're cutting fabric behind lace, because this protects the lace. This would, would grab and snag and split the lace if you were using that up against the lace. So you put this to cut the fabric, and this goes up against the lace and protects it, so you, you're careful not to snag the lace. We're also doing a lot of cutting the fabric away from lace, and this protects those little netting edges that can so easily be caught by a point. So we have the large ones and we have the small ones. They're great for clipping into tiny little corners because they have a nice little precise tip. So I love these little duckbill scissors. And of course, just your regular heavy starch. You can get this at any store. Um, but we're going to be using this a lot in heirloom sewing to give us support. We're not always going to be using like a stabilizer. so. This kind of stabilizes our, our lace and our fabric because we're working with lightweight, very flimsy things and starch is going to be your best friend. I um, also want to talk about when you're lace shaping, um, it's going to be vital that you have some kind of board to pin into. Now when you're just starting, you can certainly make your own board. You can get some muslin and uh, put some batting over a piece of cardboard, foam core, something like that, and then stretch a piece of fabric over it and make your own. But I must say that one of these shape and press boards are really worth the, worth the investment if you're going to continue doing a lot of lace shaping. These boards are great because they come with lace shapes on them. And you'll, these scallops are, she's got so many different sizes of scallops here that are really useful, and then the diamonds and the, the shield shapes and the hearts, uh, but it also has the one inch grid on it and on the back side, this is for smocking if you're doing a bishop design, it has each size and where to block your smocking. Now you'll use this board, if you're a crafter, you will use this board constantly, crafting, pinning things together, um, not just for heirloom sewing. I find these boards very helpful with all sewing, so it's worth it to invest in a board like this. And we're going to be using a lace shaping board on this project. And last, this beautiful little, uh, very expensive wooden skewer <laughs> I have in my hand. You can buy a pack of these skewers. They're just shish kebab skewers at the grocery store. We use them as the third finger to help us guide lace and ruffles and things under the presser foot where our fingers can't go and it also protects our fingers from the needle. 
You can also use uh, the little cuticle wooden sticks um, that you see uh, where you get your nails done. So anything that's kind of sharp and pointed that will help you draw things under the needle, that's great. Um, so all of these products that you see here, we sell those at Martha Pullen Company plus a whole lot more at MarthaPullen.com. You can also get to our shop, uh, shop our products through SoBeautifulMag.com and uh, come visit us and see what kind of products we have. We have beautiful laces, we have beautiful fabrics, we have lots and lots of notions and lots of instructional books uh, that can help you with your precision sewing and heirloom sewing. So that's the overview of our introduction. Please join the rest of our blog tour to learn how to do all the other wonderful things and make this beautiful um, garment in So Beautiful magazine.